Hi everybody and welcome back to episode 26. I'm Phil Murphy, this is a Nauticus 27 foot with a bit of cream on. Behind you is a Shakespeare blue missile that you cannot see that we still need some more information on. Let's get on with this episode because we've got lots to do. Okay, so welcome back. What we've got is some cream paint on the boat. This isn't the first coat, this is the second coat. You missed the second coat purely because of where John was in relation to what position I was in with the boat. However, all is not lost because you're going to get to see the upper section on how I got to the finish that I've got. And boy, is that a cracking finish. I'm hoping that camera can pick it up because that is absolutely gorgeous. I am so chuffed with it. So, how did they get to that process? You're going to see that right up here. We used, I flatted it and then I put another coat on and I've ended up. This is only two coats by the way and I'm so happy with the finish that I may just leave it as it is. I'm not going to tinker with it anymore. So, where I've got up to at this stage, this section and round to the front where I finished the last episode has had two coats. The opposite side has only had the one coat at this stage. So what we're going to do in this episode is we're going to colour in the cream paint the whole of the roof. Well, I'm saying all, you're going to see half of it, but you're going to see all the stages of me doing the half. And then I'm going to finish off with the other because it can get boring looking at paint dry. So, should we get, oh, before we go up there, I'll show you what I did down here. So, last episode. This, as you remember, is the hatch. So that has had uh, one coat that has been flatted with 400 grade wet and dry. And I just put some uh, filler, putty, in areas where there was little divots that you can now see because it's cream, obviously you can see little areas where you couldn't see before. So that's gonna get sanded down and then that's gonna have a final coat. So while we're on with that, I can then, once I've done that with the brush, I can then just coat that. So that will get finished at the same time as that. So there we are. Welcome aboard. Now, so this step that we're at at this stage, what I did is, obviously, I have dry sanded it, as you know, in the last episode. But this morning, I've washed it down with my spray, water and soap, dried it all off. So we're now basically at the stage of, that there, tack ragging, ready for the paint. As you can see, I've masked off one half of this roof which I said in the last episode, I think this is the best option because it's such a vast area, I'm obviously going to end up with a dry edge somewhere along the line. So I have tacked off, is that me? No, it's all right. Um, I've tacked off half the side, masked up round here because these, I'm still debating what to do with these, to be honest. Uh, I'm not going to take them off, but I'm going to paint them. So I'm just going to tack rag off and then we can start putting some paint on. Okay. It's basically clean. All I just have to do is take off the final bit of dust if I've missed any. We're gonna start at that end and there's a reason for starting at that end and I'll tell you about that in a minute but I'm just gonna start now because I've already got my paint out and I don't want to get a film on it. So I don't want me to say. We were talking about these rails on the, on the roof. Yeah. What if they were teak? These? Like, yeah, to match the running. Well, I'd have to stop painting because I'd have to take these off. Forget that suggestion. Yes, of course that. I 
I have already made that decision of keeping these rails because they are really strong and firm and I thought, do I need another job? I know it looked nice, but actually they are strong. They don't leak. So I think I just touch them up. They'll be fine. Yeah, it's pretty clean. Good. Right. There we go. Ready for paint. So I've got two rollers. I bought an even smaller one because I thought that might help me around some of these tighter areas here. I am going to have to brush underneath these because I don't want to get paint on the underside. What I should have done, I should have masked this bit, but I, uh, I didn't. But I reckon that roller will do just fine. This is the first coat, so I'm not interested in whether it's uh, looking good. I want it just to be a really good uh, adhered coat to the top. Uh, and then we can flat it off and then we can build on top of that. So this stage We're just slapping the paint off It's a technical boat term Slapping the paint. Walloping. Walloping the boat So Just going to shove a bit of paint along there So, we do apologise about the background noise here. Oh yeah, uh, you said you might be able to get rid of some of that. Well, I can move some of it, but not all. Right. So first coat, doesn't have to be spectacular. Uh, what shall we do with that? Slip that on there for a second. I have got lumps in this paint. I'm a bit concerned about that. Take the underside of those rails for the next coat. Yes, yes. So basically, we're just going to tip off. I know it's a small brush, it doesn't have to be at this stage. I'm just using this brush because, to be honest, I've enjoyed using this brush and I've, I've actually got some. Well, the second coat of, uh, 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 of this. I use this small, the small brush to tip off, and uh, to be honest, it's it was equally, if not better, than me using the other brush that I did um, the blue coat some episodes ago. So I'm just going to stick with this for this first coat. Like I say, I'm not overly bothered about patches what have you. 
just want this coat to adhere really well. Because this top is going to get a lot of sun, a lot of weather conditions and this boat when I took this boat maybe four years ago this top section which was in this colour here was all cracked and craved and everything so it was either the paint <clears throat> the paint uh, well I, I know it was done outside at the time uh, probably in its mooring at the time um, the under section before whoever painted it must have been dirty and what have you and it just was flaking off I don't want that to happen in this instance and I think Two reasons it won't is one is of course we're indoors and I've had the uh, I've been fortunate to uh, be able to do this boat on the inside. I've given some I've given this top section some really good coats of undercoat, and I've put I'm putting this top coat on uh, and it's all clean. So all the processes that I've done have all been ideal. So I'm hoping that this boat, once it's done, will last for many years. Actually, this uh, this process that we're doing right this minute will give us an idea, actually, on how how well or how soon this uh, paint starts to dry off. So when we do the final coat, speed-wise, it will give me an indication of how much um, dry time we've got before it starts to drag. I'm looking for anywhere. It's alright, I'm happy with that. Good to so, <clears throat> I'm going to continue. I'm going to go right to the top of this area here, and then you're going to come back when it gets to the flatting stage. Uh, so then you get to see the whole of the processes. So, I'm just basically going to continue as I am with the way I've done it. You can see it's all patchy, what have you. I'm just going to do this section. I'm going to finish off, then I'm going to do a little bit of, I'm going to go down that side of the boat because remember that's only had one coat, so I'm going to give that a second coat. And then tomorrow I'm going to do that side. 
and then hopefully when John comes back we can then show this side being complete, roll and tipped properly and everything looking pretty pucker. So I'll see you later. That's the sort of finish we're after. I'm going to show you now how we got to that stage. You know the dance. Follow me. Right. So, if you recall, this is only the first coat on this side. The other side, of course, has had two coats. I know you can't see me, but you don't need to see me. You need to see the work. So I have now flatted this, this area off all the way down the boat. Uh, and that has been wet and dried with 400 grades. So I've got it fairly flat. I've not over sanded it because I'll end up going back down to grey. But that's a really good coat uh, and a good... Um, <laughs> I've lost... I lost myself because John's wandered off the camera. <laughs> anyway, anyway, anyway. So, yeah, he's just panned off over there to show you the rest of the work. <laughs> I'm busy pointing up here wondering where the... Where, I'm not allowed to say the F word, am I? Uh, where the heck he's gone. <laughs> so... <laughs> So anyway, I'm assuming you're back. Oh, you're back, you're back, you're back, right. So all the way along here is all been flatted and then that's ready for the second, <laughs> that's ready for the second coat. That, when you saw originally the hatch, I'm trying not to laugh all the time now. <laughs> that's had three coats, by the way. So, I mean, I'll check to see how good this is. The other side has had two coats. And I've got a gut feeling that now that I've seen the effect that I can get on that hatch, I might go for a third coat because I really do like the, the finish of it. And also, I have noticed between cans there's been a shade difference. And what I should have done, is should have, I should have mixed them all together and then placed them back in the pots, uh, which I didn't do. So I'm hoping that there's not going to be too much of a difference between this second coat that I'm going to put in, uh, put on the top uh, and this side in, in relation to the other side, which has had the two coats, because that one looks a little bit creamier than this one does. So we may end up having to do three coats in the end. So I think that's it. Oh, can I just give you some advice on this cream as well? I, it didn't happen with the blue, but when I opened the can, and I came back the next day, I ended up with a very, very thin film of the paint drying. So the distance between the uh, top of the paint and the lid, obviously there was an air gap. And I couldn't take the film away. It just disintegrated into little lumps. So what I did is I used some cling film and I used a little plastic top that I cut out from you know, any supermarket, you know, soup or whatever, I cut, I don't need that anymore, um, I cut that disc to the size, uh, the circumference of the can, and then I covered it with cling film and I dropped it in, so then that was a weight to hold down on top of the paint, and this morning, no skim, so excellent. So that's a good, good method. I suppose you could just use cling film on its own, but I use this as a weight as well, and I got I got no problems at all. And at 40 odd pounds a can, you need to make sure that you don't end up with bits in it. Whose idea was the cling film? It was yours. Oh right, thank you. Yeah, that was my idea. You stick behind the camera. Are we done? Yeah, we're done. Okay, okay on to the next bit. Right, so welcome on to the upper deck. And these clearly are the uh, stages that we're up to at the moment. If you remember, I had a little blue masking line going along there. I've ripped that off. You can see the line is still over there. Um, and I'm now basically using my 400 grade paper, lubricating it, there's uh, some sugar soap in there. I'm just removing the uh, tape line 
because obviously there's a little lip there. You just need to check it with your finger. There is none there. That one's already been done. And I'm basically going all the way along here uh, with my lubrication in the form of a spray. As you can see, I'm up to this stage here. You can see that it's all gone matte at that side. So I'm just basically going along with my 400 grit paper. I did use a block, but to be honest, the, the because it's got so many curves and what have you, it just it just dug in too much. So I prefer um, to use my hand and the paper on there, and then to use plenty of lube on there like that. <clears throat> you can get a nice flat surface anyway, and I've done that to be honest all the way around, and uh, uh, and it's it's been fine. It doesn't require too much because there's not a great deal of paint on here. And as you remember, we just slapped a bit of paint on just to colour it up. You can already see the highs and the low, well, the high spots are grey. If I just take that off like so, you can see, you can just see them and they're just pushing through. So we're just wanting a nice even surface and then we can start with the next coat on top of that. So what's going to happen, of course, is that's going to be removed. That's going to get its first coat. And then we're just going to keep building the coats up. And hopefully we'll end up with something like that hatch down there. That's the theory. And that's what we're trying to achieve. So I'm now going to do carry on doing all this. And you are going to see me at the next stage. I don't know what the next stage is, but you're going to see a difference. So I'll see you later. Okay, so as you can see, that side has been done. We've masked off it's a lot easier this way by portioning off the uh, the roof because I'm in control of uh, all the dry, uh, all the wet area. I've, you know, as you put the paint on, as you will see when I do this side, um, it gives me plenty of time uh, to put the paint, roll the paint on, and then tip off uh, and continue to that to to the end of there because I have split this whole roof up into apartments uh if that's the right word so quarters in quarters. quarters yeah it is in quarters actually yeah so i've just finally i've tacked off once i'm just tacking off again with a tack cloth just to take off anything that's dropped from this ceiling uh, and we can get started i've decided to start painting from this side that way because as I got towards the end, you'll notice where I haven't actually painted towards this, this top beam here, uh, this handrail, I, I, I stopped. I'm going to start from this side. It'll give me a chance to do underneath here, around here, and then progress to the front because there is an end zone where John is at the moment. So I'm going to try it this way. Um, so I'll get cracking. We go. I'm not using the roller while I'm at this end because it's a bit too fiddly and I'll get paint everywhere. So it's just easier to use this little brush uh, to get, uh, to get uh, this done around here. And actually the finish is pretty good. Uh, as the hatch will suggest because the hatch has come out tremendously well.
can afford to use a bit more paint than normal uh, under here because it's a flat surface uh, and it's not likely to run. Sorry, what are you doing? I'm going to move the camera to the other end. Oh, right. In a minute. You can do that now if you want. Right. So we got past the awkward bit. And now we're on to uh, the fun bit, the easy bit. And that is rolling and tipping. And I, just, I was just going to say, I was quite yeah. easy. Oh. I can bleed that. Oh, uh, right, so we've rolled it out and we're going to tip off. And the way to tip off, I have found with this cream, and it doesn't show any of the edges as you go along, is to start tipping from the wet side into the dry side. And you don't seem to end up with a line. Now, for all my friends that have watched the um, the side of the boat where I did the uh, rolling and tipping eight months ago on the side of the boat, you would have noticed... All 10,000 of them. All 10,000 of them, yeah. Uh, you would have noticed that I tipped into the wet paint and I found by doing it the other way, I, I, I do not get an edge at all. So I've learnt that that's the best way to do it. So from now on, you will always see me tip into the dry. Because as you place your brush down, you don't... Basically what you're doing is, if, you, if I did it this way, you push into the dry and you, you're folding new paint over onto the dry and you end up with that. It seems to be something like that effect. But if you take your brush into the dry and pull away from it, you don't end up with an edge. You've also noticed I'm using a very, well, it's not a wide brush at all, but the finish I have been getting has been really good. Sounds like a creaky bed, this boat, doesn't it? Yes, it doesn't feel very safe, actually. It is. Very safe. How would you know about creaking beds? <laughs> I used to have. It's a bit rude, isn't it? roller handle because I can't find the one that fits this roller but it seems to work on me.
just take when you're rolling into paint, just take it about an inch or two into the paint that you uh, have already put on, just to re-wet that edge. Like so. And then with your brush you can then it's like that. It's like landing a plane. So they come across like they're on a runway and you end up just going touchdown. And bringing it across. And that's the best way to describe it. Just bring it down. You can actually see it sort of is an invisible edge and if I brought it that way it would totally wrong. Anybody want a sandwich anybody? That's what that's for. So we need to get some paint on this edge here before it goes off. This is where this masking off comes in handy because what I will do when it's set as that edge is over there, I can rip the, uh, this, this tape off and this is the sort of tape that leaves a clean edge. It doesn't pull the paint off at all. It leaves an exact line. And then we'll um, use very fine wet and dry paper. We'll lose the edge and then we can mask up on that side. Well, no, actually, we won't need to mask up on that side. And then we can continue in, running into the dry paint in this corner here. And then you've lost it. And then you've got that nice continuity. If I did it all in one hit, I'd just end up with a dry edge everywhere. It's amazing how you can see the brush lines when you directly after you've tipped it, but then the paint settles into yeah, each just, other. Yeah, sort of pools. Yeah, I don't know whether it's because this surface is quite flat. So I'm over the worst bit really because that was quite wide. Now I've got to a sort of a, a thin channel less likely to have you you're less likely to have a dry edge so basically it means that I can actually put down quite a, a length of paint before I have to tip off because I've not as much to cover Would it be in this colour? Is the camera picking it up all right? Yes. All oh, right. <coughs> Can you give me that roll, Phil? This roll? In fact, the big roll. You want my big roll? It's just stopping the light. Oh, right. Well, that's going to cause me a problem. That one? This or one. this one? Yeah, this one. That's good.
this edge all around. Yes. Right. She can't see where I'm tipping. I can. Looks great. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. You see how uh, easy and quick it is by doing what splitting this whole roof up. It's less pressured. Yes, you're not. Makes so much sense. It. Yeah. Definitely thinner this uh, cream. I've got a fish eye. Just noticed. What's a fish eye? Well, I've no doubt quite a few of you will know what a fish eye is, uh, especially if you're watching and you've done car spraying in the, or whatever. But a fish eye is where there's a contaminant in the air. Uh, possibly silica, so a bit like silicone or whatever, uh, and it's landed and I've 
when I've gone over with my cleaning fluid, etc., I've missed a bit, uh, and the paint doesn't adhere to it, it sort of wells around it and leaves a dark patch, and I can see one forming over there. So I've got one fish eye that I will have to address. I will show it you once everything is dry. Uh, that'll be in the next episode. So we're going to be coming to a conclusion with this one. Right after I finish this. So to the finishing touches there. So I've done that edge, done that. I just need to tip off. Have it. So, voila, another quarter of this roof done. So we'll let that go off. I'll do some work on the downside of the, uh, around the boat and allow this to go off. And then tomorrow uh, we'll come back and we'll start doing the sides, etc. So. We'll finish the episode, if I may, on this note. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate, this has been a bit of a long-winded one, but I hope it's been informative and it's been interesting for you. Do like, do subscribe, and I will see you on the next episode. See you later. Bye for now.